Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So guys, I've been on a break for a few days. Um, when I was on vacation, I didn't really take a vacation, so I took a few days away from social media. And the last video that I did, or one of the last videos I did, was on the government shutdown. Essentially, the Democratic Party and trying to come up with a defense for DACA, or to, to come up with some legislative fix in order to keep the 800,000 um, people, human beings, into the country that were born here through no fault of their own, keep those people into the country, they shut the government down. Now, whether you think that shutting the government down was a good strategy or not is, is almost besides the point right now. They shut the government down. One of the major parties in this country thought that this was a big enough deal to shut the entire thing down. I agreed with them on this. Now, I agree with them on this because, A, the majority of the public is behind you in the sense of saying, we don't want these kids kicked out of the country. B, these are actual human beings, meaning this is not purely a political thing. There are real people at the end, meaning there are actual consequences that are associated with these people being kicked out of the country. C, if you're going to run your party to the exclusion of everything else, meaning identity to the exclusion of everything else, then from the sake of consistency, looks like you would have to represent those identities. Meaning if we're going to take economics off the table and we're going to say, you know, we're going to be for LGBTQ, we're going to be for black, we're going to be for Hispanic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. We're the party of identity. Then it's a little weird when one of those identities need your assistance and you're willing to not necessarily go to bat for them. So from a standpoint of consistency, this made sense to me. But now this gets a little weird. Because the party, the major party that shut down the government, within three days, reopened the government. The one singular demand that they had was on this idea of DACA. There needs to be a real long-term fix for DACA, a legislative fix for DACA. We don't want to kick these kids out of the country and there's a ticking time clock, or there's a ticking clock. The government was reopened. There was no fix for DACA. The only thing, the only concession, if you want to call it a concession, that Democrats got was... If you open the government back up, we'll pledge to bring this up. Meaning Mitch McConnell gave this word. That's it. That's all they have. The, what they ended this on, we're shutting down the entire thing. We're shutting down the edifice. And what we have to open it back up is a pledge from Mitch McConnell. Now, this pledge in no way takes into account what takes place if Mitch McConnell is voted down. It doesn't take into account what takes place if Paul Ryan in the House says, yeah, we don't want to do anything with this. It says none of that. It's just a pledge. As if Mitch McConnell has absolute power over both branches of government. Or I should say both houses. But whatever. That's what they went with, and that's what they were willing to start the government back up on. Now we find out that after this failure, after this over-the-top failure that everybody understood was a failure, including other Democrats recognizing that this was a failure, they compound it. They make it that much worse. This came out a few days ago. Let's see. Uh, uh, give me one second. Budget talks progress as Senate Democrats drop Dreamer demands. Yes, you heard that right. Budget talks progress as Senate Democrats drop Dreamer demands. But House Democrats may not support a spending deal that lacks relief for young undocumented immigrants. In case you didn't fully understand what was being said here, yes, you heard that right. The Democratic Party shuts down the United States government. The United States government is shut down for three days. They shut this down over DACA because they believed and they cared for these kids so much that they needed this particular thing to stop. Meaning we're not going to restart this government. We're not going to allow any business to go through until a deal is made for these young kids who through no fault of their own were brought into this country. Restarted the government back up with a pledge 
That's it. Just the pledge. And now they've taken it off the table entirely. Meaning, yes, they shut the government down, but they were willing to take that particular demand, the main demand, the singular demand almost, off the table entirely. This is amazing. I mean, it's amazing on a few counts, but just from the level of gross, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Gross inconsistency. How do you shut the government down over a particular issue? And then you restart the government without a resolution to that particular issue. And then, with a few days later, you take the issue completely off the table. Let's read the story. I, 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 I find this to be amazing. That's all. I find this to be amazing. Uh, it's not so much that I'm shocked by the failure. It's more so that it looks so over the top ridiculous. That I got to be honest. I wouldn't have expected them to look this bad. Let, let me say it that way. This is pathetic. This is pathetic. This is pathetic on a level that's breathtaking. Senate Democrats are willing to drop their demand that relief for DREAMers be tied to any long-term budget agreement, a potential boost for spending talks, but one that could face opposition from their House counterparts. The shift comes in response to the deal struck between Senate leaders Monday to reopen the government and begin debate on an immigration bill next month. Meanwhile, budget negotiators are expressing optimism that a two-year agreement to lift stiff caps on defense and domestic spending is increasingly within reach. We're reviewing immigration and spending on separate terms because they're on separate paths. Senate Minority Leader, M Minority Whip Dick Durbin said Tuesday. Now, You'd be not crazy to believe that that was coming from a Republican. Like, that's the Republican talking point. Understand, the Republicans are, for the most part, assiduously stuck to this talking point of these two things are separate and distinct. We shouldn't even be talking about these things together. Democrats shut the government down three days later, completely cave and collapse, just fall apart. A few days later after that, oh yeah, these are separate paths. We agree with our Republican counterparts. These are on separate paths. These things should not be tied together. That's just a level of capitulation that I, I don't think I've ever seen before. That's amazing. Embarrassing, but amazing. Let's keep going. Some majority leader, Mitch McConnell's procedural concession means that we've got a deadline in the process, Durbin added. That, to me, is a significant step forward. I'm glad it is just to you. It's not everything I wanted. That's for sure. But it's a step forward. But is it a step forward? I mean, what exactly do you have? I mean, you have a pledge from Mitch McConnell to bring this up. That's it. That's it. You don't know if Mitch McConnell is going to be able to deliver his members to get anything done. You don't know if the House is going to be able to deliver their members to get anything done. You have nothing. You have nothing. And you're saying this is a significant step forward. That's embarrassing. You shut the United States government down. And a few days later, you've capitulated so much that you've now taken the singular issue off the table completely. That is embarrassing. That is embarrassing. We are insisting, let's see, what was the other one? But House Democrats have signaled they're not ready to go along with the long-term budget deal without a fix to deferred action for childhood arrivals program that the President Donald Trump is ending. We are insisting that these things be held in the same negotiation, a senior House Democrat aide. To us, what's important is our, what? What's important is are these talks are linked or not linked? To us, they're linked. This is sad. I'm sorry, this is sad. Senator Pat Murray, another House or another member of the Democratic leadership, said that although she would prefer a deal to protect young, undocumented immigrants to be part of the budget negotiation, the agreement reached with Mitch McConnell can make that impossible. The Kentucky Republican has said the Senate will turn an immigration bill only if the government is still funded and few Democrats seem to want another shutdown. That's called capitulation. I mean, they failed. 
That means they failed. That means they had no plan. They went into a government shutdown with no plan whatsoever. And within a few days, gave up. And then with a few days later, gave up further. Gave up further. And took their one singular demand off the table completely. It's embarrassing. February 8th, we're going into another step gap. But we have to have that budget agreement in order to move forward. That's the goal, Murray said. And then the deal is that if DACA is not part of that, then it would be the next thing considered. Everyone first preference is to get it all done by the 8th, a senior Democratic aide said on Wednesday. We haven't speculated on what happens if it all doesn't come together. We're to believe. We're honestly to believe. That in no way have you guys considered what takes place politically. You guys are political animals. You're Democrats. You haven't considered. You're telling the public that you haven't considered what's going to take place if the deal itself is not done, meaning all of these things aren't done together. Do you understand how ridiculous this looks? You shut the government down. Within three days, you completely fold. You just, you're done. Fall apart. Completely, utterly caved in. Everybody records it as such. You have 102 hacks that come out and say hey hey no this cave in is really a win but ultimately it's a failure and a few days later you fail it's almost like falling through the floor and falling through the floor some more this is one of the um i thought this was funny because i found this to be pretty true this is Chuck Schumer's, um, under Chuck Schumer's office. I shut the government down and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. That's all I got. They've been trolling Democrats, Donald Trump and some of these other Republicans. Because when you fail to this degree and you're in politics, well, it's not like you failed in secret. Everybody understood that you failed, including the kids who are going to be kicked out and deported from this country because of your failure and your weakness. This is embarrassing. This is embarrassing. This is your resistance, ladies and gentlemen. This is your resistance. Your resistance at work. Your resistance at work. I'll leave it at this. I'm not going to beat a dead horse. And I'm pretty sure I beat a dead horse on this to some degree. It's just, there's, whether you thought that shutting down the government was a good idea or not, put that to the side for the moment. Put that to the side. One of the major parties came up with a plan to shut down the government, and that plan really had no backing at all. Meaning, they had there was no there was there was no thought into it. I mean, can you honestly say there was thought into this process when three days later you're giving up, you're capitulating, and then a few days after that, after capitulating, you take the entire thing off the table entirely. We would like to have a deal on DACA, but it's not required. If we don't get a deal on DACA, we'll deal with the next. We'll deal with the next. Is this your resistance? Is this actually your resistance? Is this a resistance at all? And what does resistance actually look like? And does it look like this? Does it look like this? They failed because they didn't want to stand up for these kids. That's what it boils down to. And this, this is failure on multiple levels. The reason that these kids are in a situation in the first place is because Democrats wanted to use these kids as a political football, either from the standpoint of hitting Republicans over their head with them in the sense of being in the off times of, oh my God, you're going to kick these kids out the country, you're brutes. Or you're going to vote for us because if you don't, you're going to get a Republican in that office who's going to kick you out the country. Understand. DACA was an imperfect fix. It was going through the court system, meaning even if a Democratic president would have won, it's very possible that that Democratic president would have been compelled to follow the law on this. I'm making the point that this was already an imperfect fix. If you actually cared about these kids, then you would have did something more permanent in the beginning, not necessarily doing this kind of DACA fix. Yeah, this is problematic, man. All, all I'm saying is, if you're going to represent identity to the degree that you represent identity and you're going to exclude issues of economics, 
Well, now you have this issue of identity that's up. And the question that's kind of lingering in the air like a bad smell is what do you actually believe? And if you full well believe in these issues of identity and you believe that, oh my God, we got to go to bat for these issues of identity and we, you know, LGBTQ and blacks and Hispanics, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And now you have a situation that is questioning what you actually believe and putting that question to the test. I don't care about your values. I don't care what you tell me. We care what you do. And in this particular case, we've seen massive inconsistency. And when, it, when people needed you, when there are nearly a million kids who need you, you fold. Not just fold. You fold to such a degree where you even take the issue off the table entirely. That's pathetic. That's all I'm saying. That's immensely pathetic. I'm going to end it at that. I'm going to beat a dead horse. All right, guys. If you enjoy the content, feel free to share, like, subscribe, and of course, you can always support the patron. This is appalling. Look at this. Look at his face. That is the face of somebody who's failed miserably, and he knows he failed miserably. I've ended at that. Have a good one, guys.